What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat basketball channel. My name is Amir, and before I get into today's video, I want to thank everybody for their continued support of this channel. And I'm on my path of getting 200 subscribers to my channel. Just need three more subscribers to hit that goal. So if you can hit subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So for today's video, I want to talk about a report that came out that said, there is a pathway where the Miami Heat could potentially keep Tyler Hero in a Damian Lillard trade. So we all know that Joe Cronin has said multiple times that he's not interested in Tyler Hero as the centerpiece for the Damian Lillard sweepstakes and mentioned that the Portland Trailblazers already have backcourt players of the future with Scoot, Shaden, and Anthony Simons. So it's going to be redundant. And we all know that in order for this trade to happen, Tyler most likely will end up on the third team, whether it's the Nets, not the Spurs anymore, but whatever other team is interested will acquire Tyler Hero for draft capital and possibly a player. We think the Nets would be the best fit and probably the place that Tyler would want to go to the most. And that would provide him with the best chance of winning and not going to a rebuild himself. So with Tyler Hero remaining on the Miami Heat, who would the Miami Heat need to put together in a package in order to acquire Damian Lillard, Lillard that would satisfy the Portland Trailblazers um, and their rebuild? So according to Greg Sylvander from the Five Reasons Sports Network, my favorite Miami Heat content creators, he mentioned that we could essentially take on extra contracts, as we've discussed before in past videos, where if Portland is interested in getting off uh, players like Yusuf Nurkic or Nasir Little or other veteran players on their team that are making decent salaries, then they could offload those types of players along with Damian Lillard to the Miami Heat. So in order to acquire Nurkic, let's say, Damian Lillard, of course, the Heat can then put together a package which excludes Tyler Hero. So according to Sylvander, he said, the Heat can send out both of our first round picks from the past two years. So Jaime Jaquez Jr. and Nikola Jovic, two first round picks, some pick swaps, and then the filler then would be Duncan Robinson, Kyle Lowry, and the sweetener would be Caleb Martin, as we know that the Blazers want to acquire him, but we also know that Damian Lillard wants to play with him on the Miami Heat. So to make the, the numbers work, we have to include both Kyle Lowry, who's going to be on a close to $30 million expiring contract, with Duncan Robinson, who's going to make around $19 million next year, to compensate for Nurkic, who's going to make around 16 to 17 per million on his contract as well. So does that sound like a better offer for the Trailblazers? And does that sound like a better offer for the Miami Heat? And what, what do you guys think? I'm not entirely sure as I'm making this video right now, um, whether I would want to do the original trade, which would be four first round picks, Tyler Hero um, and Duncan Robinson and let's say Nikola Jovic. Um, and if we have to throw in one more asset, maybe like a Haywood Highsmith, um, definitely wouldn't want to throw in both Jovic and Jaime um, since I believe the Miami Heat still have the leverage because Damian Lillard has said he only wants to play for the Heat and that he will not report to other teams, as we all know. So that package or the one I just mentioned, giving up Kyle, Duncan, Caleb, both the Rooks draft picks uh, to get Dame and Nurkic. I don't know. I mean, keeping Tyler would be interesting, but the team would definitely, definitely be super top heavy. So our starting lineup essentially would be Dame at the point guard, Tyler Hero most likely as the shooting guard, which would probably give the Miami Heat the best backcourt in the NBA. At the three, it would probably have to be Haywood Highsmith if we give up Caleb Martin. 
because of defensive purposes to make up for that backcourt. And then we'd have Jimmy. And then at the four, probably Kevin Love and Bam at the five. And then in terms of our depth, that's going to be the issue. We're going to be top heavy with our big four. And on the bench, then we're going to lose some of our, our depth and our young talent um, and developmental players. So we've already lost Max Struess, who's our starting shooting guard, and Gabe Vincent, who eventually became our starting point guard. So our starting lineup is going to be good, but then now our depth is going to be depleted. So we'll have Jay Rich coming off the bench, which he's a good player. He's a two-way player. He could provide a spark on um, the offensive end as our sixth man off the bench. Um, and he's also familiar with the system as we drafted him uh, back in the day. And we would have then Thomas Bryant, who would be a capable and good young backup center. We would have Yusuf Nurkic. So I don't know. Would we start Nurkic over Love? I mean, maybe. Um, he is a center himself, but he can spread the floor a little bit. Um, so I, I could see him playing next to Bam. Uh, he is a good rebounder, so aligning him with Bam would be really good for our defensive rebounding capabilities. And if Bam is pulled away on the perimeter and the Heat rotate and play switch and zone all the time, then it's okay because in the past, Bam would be pulled out to the perimeter and then we wouldn't have any um, athleticism or any like bigs who could rebound for us. So I don't know. Let's just say for continuity, we'll just keep love in the starting lineup and then we'll have Nurk come off the bench. So we'll have him and Orlando Robinson. So now we have like an influx of bigs compared to last year, but um, not sure how much playing time Orlando was going to get anyway per game, especially if Nurk comes in. So those three plus Josh on the bench, um, who else would we have under contract at that point? Pretty much nobody. So then we would have to use the rest um, we would have to sign some vets at the men um, to fill out the rest of the roster, which we might have to do anyway, regardless of trading all these picks rather than ty- the Tyler Hero route to a third team. So can we get like a Kelly Oubre Jr. for the men? Possibly. Could we also get a TJ Warren, as I mentioned in other videos, who could be a good scorer off the bench? Could we also get perhaps a Terrence Ross, who was a Miami Heat scrub killer when he was on Orlando. Um, he could spread the floor and become a good three-point shooter for the Heat off the bench. Would we get a Christian Wood at that point? Um, and could he be then our backup four? So maybe K Love would be starting with Bam, and then we'd have Nurkic and Bryant splitting time as the backup, essentially. Um and then Christian Wood as a um, backup to Kevin Love at the four spot. That would be ridiculous if we can get that type of team and keep Tyler Hero. Then we'd be in business. I'd be okay with that. So it's all contingent on who would come to fill out that team. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I like the idea of being super top heavy. Um Perhaps I would like to retain a Caleb Martin who the Heat wouldn't really be able to retain the following year unless he just has a horrible year next year. But he is in the final year of his contract where he's making six or seven million dollars only. And so this is going to be a prove it year for him where he wants to get his first real bag. So I don't know. Giving up Caleb and keeping Tyler, not sure how I feel. And I don't know how I feel about keeping Tyler um, with Dame. I mean, Tyler is a type of player that needs a lot of shots. Like he's not the most efficient scorer. Like he is when it comes to this three point shooting, but you know, he needs the ball in his hands and that's, that's four different players that like the ball in their hands. Um, I just don't know if the ball can go around enough for all four, even though Jimmy and Bam could then potentially, become more defensive acres. Like they don't, they're both unselfish and they don't necessarily are like the score first type of players, unless you need them to. And we've needed them to be those type of players because we've had role players who've played yeah. over their head and who've done and achieved more than they 
could have or should have in certain games, but they were also super inconsistent and disappeared in the playoffs like typical role players do. So I'm not entirely sure how I feel about keeping Tyler Hero versus trading him, but it could be more interesting for the Trailblazers. I mean, if they get all these extra contracts off their books, if they get rid of, again, like a Nasir Litter, Little, excuse me, plus Dame, plus Nurkic, they could start from complete scratch and have the cap room in the future to add some players to their core of Scoot, Shaden, Anthony Simons, and then Jeremy Grant. And then they'll have even younger players, wing players, and large, taller players that they actually need because most of their players are in the the backcourt. They need frontcourt players. So Jovic, Jaime could be those players that are 22 years old and 21 years old. And that will fit in within the timeline of their complete rebuild. And players like Kyle Lowry, they could either wave or trade at the deadline or just keep him to become a mentor to Scoot and be your backup point guard with championship experience um, and just let him go the following year um, on his expiring contract. So that could be great. And then Duncan Robinson, he's 26, 27. So is Caleb. So you can insert these other two players um, within your starting lineup potentially or off the bench. And they're going to help elevate the young folks um, play by helping on the defensive end in Caleb's case, and then Duncan spreading the floor um, and getting some gravity um, so that Scoot and Shaden can operate and attack the rim. So that could be a better play, honestly, for, for Portland and Cronin to get all their vets and shitty contracts off the books. Um, so it could be better for Portland. So I wonder if they'd be open-minded to that. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about too real quick is um, the uh, Jalen Brown um, contract. So he got the largest contract in NBA history yesterday. Uh, it's a five-year deal for $307 million, which I think is just insane. But it's not insane because that's the nature of the NBA today. Contracts and salary cap is just going to keep going up. So there's going to be other players that are going to get larger deals. Uh, we just saw Desmond Bain, uh, who's been in the NBA for what, three, four years, get $207 million for five years. So that's crazy. That's crazier to me. Um, but we also saw basically at one point Mike Conley four or five years ago got the largest contract in NBA history, which was like 200 something million, something insane as well for like six years. Um, so he's just the first person to get a contract of that size. And within the next few months or the next year, we're going to see other players more deservingly. So get those types of deals. So that's just the nature of the business. So I don't think it's like a horrible contract. Um, I still think it's just ridiculous for a player of his caliber getting that type of money. Cause if you think about it and you look back at like Michael Jordan's career earnings, he only made $94 million in his 16-year career. So, of course, times were different. Contracts were different back then. But just to think of that, it's kind of insane. But not really too worried about Michael Jordan and his net worth, as he's obviously a billionaire, um, obviously getting all that money from Nike and the Jordan shoe brand. So, um, yeah, I think it's just kind of crazy. But, you know, he's only – Jalen's only 26, so he's young. He's the second best player on a championship contending team. They've been close, but not close enough over the past three seasons. Um, his last year, he's going to be 32 or so um, for this contract. He's going to be making almost 70 million, which is just insane to think of. So Boston's all in. This is their build. So I'm just flabbergasted by like, what is Jason Tatum going to make as obviously the bona fide number one superstar on that team? Like if Jalen got this, like what the hell is he going to get? So we'll see. But anyway, for this build, this is what they're going with at this point. Like they have Kristaps, Porzingis, who they signed was a good pick, but is that big three good enough? He's pretty injury prone minus last year. 
Um, and he's been up and down and pretty inconsistent with his play over the past six or seven years. So he had a good season last year, had over 20 points per game. But is he reliable? And is this team good enough? They got rid of Marcus Smart, who was like their captain, their defensive anchor, um, kind of the heart and soul of that team. So that's a big loss there. And they also lost Grant Williams, which is not a huge loss, but still, he's a pretty good player. So um, do they have enough? I don't think they're deep enough. I mean, Al Horford's only getting older. Um, Robert Williams, you know, hasn't been the same since he's had his knee surgeries. Brogdon has been injured most of his career and including during the playoffs against the Heat. So he's banged up. Um, I don't know. Who else do they have? Peyton Pritchard, he's not that great. Uh, Luke Cornett not that great. Sam Hauser, not that great. So they don't have the depth, honestly. So like if one of those players gets injured, heaven forbid, then I think they're screwed. So one thing I think though too now um, regarding this contract that Jalen got is I think this means the Boston Celtics are officially out of the Dame sweepstakes. I obviously think every team is out of the sweepstakes because Dame has explicitly said he only wants to play for Miami. He hasn't come out and changed his mind and said, okay, fine. I might go to the Clippers or the Celtics or the Sixers or whoever. He hasn't changed his mind. He's standing still. Um, and I don't think any other team was in play, honestly. But now Boston clearly doesn't have the ability to keep Dame on their roster because of his salary and how he's owed 200 plus million um, over the next four years. So that's one good thing, I guess, is that Boston is no longer in that sweepstakes. Um, I don't even think they have a good enough offer that's better than Miami's, even though everybody that is a Portland fan, fan and Cronin are pissed off about these offers that the Heat are providing. Um, I don't think they can provide a better offer. So that's one good thing, I guess, about this contract. Um, but yeah, so there's no other new news on the Dame front, of course. It's been quiet. Um we're just patiently waiting to see when this is going to happen. And again, I know it's a when, not an if, and I'm going to patiently wait. There's no sweat off my back. As long as Damien doesn't change his mind and say he wants to go to another team, Miami still has the leverage. It's only hurting the Portland Trailblazers to keep them this long. It doesn't benefit them. They said they want Miami to provide their best offer. Miami said, what is the best offer? They're not telling us. So they're the one who are playing games. Just let us know when you're ready. Let's come to the table. Let's get this done. Do you want Tyler Hero um, as part of the package, which will be traded to another team? Or do you want the package that we mentioned where we will take on more contracts like Yusuf Nurkic, Nasir Little, so we can clear your books, but we'll give you more players. So it's up to Portland to see what they want to do. So that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think the Miami Heat should keep Tyler Hero and not include him in any trades? Or do you think we should give up Hero? Let me know what you think, guys. Thanks.